There's the a broader reason I bit. say that, though, is because, I mean, it, I don't know anybody who's intentionally using meta AI in my own life. And so maybe if there's an app, that becomes a place where people can go and interact with Llama 4 and future models. And if they're more compelling than ChatGPT, maybe you crack into it. But also, like, the challenge of breaking the user habits that already exist after the last two years may be difficult. So they'll have their work cut out for them here. Well, they're, they also have a monetization advantage. Like, at least for now, it's free. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think fairly unlimited. Uh, ChatGPT has limits on the free plan, and then there's different tiers. This is speaks to why ChatGPT probably needs to get to an advertising model. Like, they're going to be fundamentally... You like this is a, an advantage that that Meta will have relative to them. It's interesting. Uh, Mark did mention subscriptions as a possibility, uh, which I guess you know if it's that that seems more fanciful that they'll get to that level. That you, you know it, it's so much better. We're going to pay for it. There is broadly speaking, though, one of my other big takeaways from this, and there are news that they're going to do an API where you can run Llama on Facebook servers, which to me doesn't make a lot of sense. I'm on record as saying chat GP, you know, open AI should stop doing that. Mm -hmm. I may be not properly internalizing and appreciating just how expensive these training runs are and are sort of going to continue to be where maybe there's a bit where we just have to figure out a way to monetize this in lots of places because we think the it's important to be on the cutting away. edge, uh, yeah. but, it, but it, it's so expensive. Like we have to figure out a way to make money from it. And, you know, that may be an, another angle on this as well. Yes. Well, um, Meta in their earnings report said, we anticipate our full year 2025 capital expenditures, including principal payments on finance leases, will be in the range of 64 to $72 billion, increased from our prior outlook of 60 to $65 billion. This updated outlook reflects additional data center investments to support our artificial intelligence efforts. I don't know whether you had a comment there, but I thought the updated outlook was interesting in the context of ongoing anxiety over CapEx spending potentially being reined in across big tech. Meta is clearly not slowing down here. It's not really being reined in, though. Everyone is, like, spending more. Everyone says they're capacity constrained. And that, that you know, there's a bit where everyone's waiting for the shoe to drop. Like, this has to be a bubble. Surely yeah, it's a bubble. Yeah, I guess the anxiety's been there for a year and a half now, and there's no sign of slowing down. Right. That, that's, the, that's the thing about this. There has not been a, any indicators from the cloud. Everyone keeps saying we are capacity constrained. We are capacity constrained. We are capacity constrained. And, you know, so, the, the, you know, at some point we'll know we've actually gotten into a bubble once mm -hmm. everyone gives up on thinking that there's a bubble. And it actually is different this time. Like they're, they're like, but I mean, it's, this was the theme across everyone. Everyone in all these earnings is we're capacity constrained. We're trying to buy more. And Meta, you know, is saying the same thing. They also, again, because they don't have that cloud offering of people using it. On one hand, I frame that as a positive where they have direct paybacks within their, their business. Oh, I forgot to mention the business messaging too, which I think makes a ton of sense where mm -hmm. having... I'm just familiar with this in Asia. This idea of selling through through messaging has been a thing for a long time, but that doesn't scale well if you need someone on the other side. But if an AI is there and you can just you know message with the business through a chat app and and have your questions answered and make a purchase, sure, uh, makes sense. And they're the they're the entity to do that for sure. But yeah, I was going to bring that up at the very end. Basically, what that looks like in Asia right now, and correct me if I get any of this wrong is I post a picture of the t-shirt that I'm wearing, which is a 1992 UNLV basketball uh, Final Runner. Four t-shirt. And Great somebody, somebody uh, clicks on that photo and says, I want to buy this photo. And then you interact with like a real life person and they sell you on it. Is that right? Yeah, and it no, works exactly. in Asia because the labor costs are lower in Asia. But it, that model isn't really sustainable in the West unless you can have an AI agent have the conversation and complete the sale. That's exactly right. I think they said the, the markets where it's biggest is Thailand and, and Vietnam and where labor is, is inexpensive and, and mm -hmm. it, it, it can you fit in the margins that of selling sort of an individual item that doesn't work in the West. And, and you know, this is 
this is an important principle, sort of broadly speaking, it ties into our manufacturing things and all this that I think people do do lose sight of. Like people will travel to another country and be like, wow, the service is so great. Or, there, you know, so many people were, you know, filling up my gas or opening the door for me or X, Y, Z. That is a function of low labor costs, which is a function and you get technology. Like I think about this in the context of flying, for example, right? I prefer U.S. airlines over other airlines, despite the fact that other airlines have arguably better on plane service, have better food, et cetera, because the U.S. airlines have way better technology and mm -hmm. just booking tickets easier, canceling tickets, changing things. To me, that's actually more important. Why do U.S. airlines have better technology? Because they have higher labor costs. Higher labor costs drive investments in technology to get sort of more leverage out of the labor that you do have. And this is a good thing. The fact that it's expensive to have a factory in the U.S. is a function of everyone in the U.S. making a lot of money. And it's why you, the, the response, ideal response, is more innovation to make people even more productive over time, which makes everyone richer. Like, like technology, this is why technology is a good thing. It does make everyone richer in the long run. And I think that's a point. It's just sort of like I, I was reflecting on it actually in the context of this discussion, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's in the, in the, in, in the case of the U S if face, if Facebook comes up with these business chat agents, it is not taking anyone's job. <laughs> like the whole point is you can't get anyone to do these jobs, it, but it is creating more economic value because you can have a storefront or a storekeeper orchestrating yeah. a bunch of agents to build a business that wasn't possible previously. Yes. Um, well, in summary, the app may or may not succeed, but they may as well try it since they're investing all this money in it. I can't imagine that they're going to be an actual competitor to ChatGPT given the head start that ChatGPT has. Um, and it's only been two years, but still, it's like everybody I, I know in my life just uses ChatGPT and uses ChatGPT as shorthand for AI generally. But good luck to Meta AI and the standalone. Well, I mean, app. we're we're all accidental Threads users because they keep cramming it in Instagram. Exactly, I think of Threads it, so. and I'm like, you know, <laughs> it's a really well made product, great engineering, and the only time I run into Threads is when Instagram forces me to, and it happens by accident. But that being said, uh, the other takeaway is that AI continues to be unbelievably added to a additive to Meta's business now, and then there's still a ton of untapped ups upside going forward. I think, think so. That's I mean, a fair I think summary. I think so. I mean, they, they, I haven't gone through their earnings yet, which which just dropped before we recorded, and so I'm interested if they made any comments in in this regard. But it's theoretically additive. M me on the outside looking in feels yes absolutely facebook should be investing in this because i think they have like the, what i said to zuckerberg and he did kind of like visibly cringe when i said this is uh meta is the microsoft of consumer in that th they own Nobody distribution they own all the channels <laughs> and, and well the the question that raises is does that mean they have to be investing to be on the do they have to have the best ai like mm -hmm. Microsoft's kind of step step back and said, we you know we just take AI as it comes along and uh, and we'll implement it and we'll benefit because we're putting it in the places that people actually want to use it and uh, and should that is that the better approach for Meta? Like, sure, we spun up the open source ecosystem, but we should just start using sort of what's out there and what's available. Do they need to be? Mark Zuckerberg believes they need to have the best AI. Uh, that was the piece of the interview that didn't quite land with me. I mean, you didn't really press him on it, and he didn't really articulate much further than saying, we believe that there's going to be advantages to being on the frontier. But yeah, to your point, I mean, that has seemed like a race to nowhere because everybody just catches up to you in three months anyways, and you're spending unbelievable amounts of money to be at the frontier and to what end is, I think, an open question at this point. Right. Well, it, it, they do need something, to your point, though, they need something to be open. They don't want to be, like, stuck using an open AI API or something along those mm -hmm. lines. Like that, That's pretty straightforward. The other thing is they do need to tune their AI for their specific use case, which is massive scale. Like, in Chris Cox in the keynote, he talked about what, like, everyone's focused on how smart it is and their scores. And he's like, but for us, we equally 
prioritize time to first token and token price. Like, and you think about it, if they're rolling out, if, if there's close to a billion users using it today through whatever means they may or may not be using it or know they're using it, <laughs> yeah. that's a lot of money. And so they need a model that is tuned to scale to that level that offers the performance they want at the price they want with the sort of low latency that, 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 that they want. Maybe in the long run, if they get, they might do more and more of their own chips. They might want the model particularly tuned to whatever they, they do in that regard. Like there's, I think if you're at their scale, it's like Meta should not be renting cloud servers from AWS. They need to be mm-hmm. building their own infrastructure. And I buy that applies to AI. They need to be do, doing their own AI, uh, just particularly given the scale arguments. And so, so in that context, I, I'm on board. I've been on board with their investments all along. Again, I get the sense that maybe they feel almost intimidated by the costs and, and a little concerned about that. But I do still think it makes sense for, for them to push in that direction. There you go. Um, all right. 